Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. Today, we have three more great news stories. And if you missed the crazy Karen from the mall today, you're in the right place. Nobody wears safety orange for pleasure. So me and my man together have five kids. He has two, I have three. I love all of them dearly, but it can get a little cramped in our home, so we take whatever alone time we can get. Not to mention the three roommates we have. Any hoozles, today we decided to take a trip to a large orange home improvement store. Now both of us love DIY stuff, so it works out. We don't have a lot of money to just blow on fun nights out, but it gives us some time to just be me and him. Now something to mention is, my beloved adores Safety Orange. He's got like nine shirts, a zipper hoodie, a beanie that's truly eye startling. He happens to be wearing one such outfit today. So we're hanging out in one of the aisles looking for a pipe plug. Our basement keeps flooding from a drainage pipe that's doing the opposite of its job when I hear a telltale clearing of the throat. Being a regular lurker on this sub, I give him a little kiss to let her know that he's not an employee. I then take his hand and we walk to the next aisle. He gives me a funny look but shrugs it off and accepts it. The next aisle over is the beginning of flooring. Weird setup, I know, but it's ours. We're looking to replace our kitchen floor anyway, so it works out. I hear a louder ahem from the end of the aisle, and I look over, and she's, not kidding, got her arms crossed and tapping her foot. I don't want what's happened to so many others on here to happen to me, so I jump the gun and straight up hiss at her. No, I did not misspell something. You did read that right. I hissed at her. I wanted something that she wouldn't be able to accuse me of violence or inappropriate gestures, but would send the message, leave us alone. I thought about it many times while reading the stories, and I was very proud that I actually did it. It sort of had the desired effect that she looked beyond startled and shocked and not a small bit confused. The look was awesome. She walked away. My love asked me what that was about, concerned. I shrugged and said, I'll tell you later. I thought I'd achieve what was the impossible, but nope. So my sweetheart and I are looking at these gorgeous blue shiny hexagon tiles called mermaid something when nature decided to get an attitude with me. I politely excused myself and took off running since the ladies room was on the other side of the building. Dumb design is dumb. Now this part of the story is mildly paraphrased because I of course was relieving myself. Apparently this tea waffle waited till I left and immediately pounced like she was waiting for us in the next aisle. More flooring, different type, wood paneling and the like. My dear one was just perusing the tiling, waiting for me to come when she grabbed his shoulder, spun him around. This is not difficult because he's short and lanky. She started poking him in the chest, spewing the basic diatribe that all Karens like to in these accounts. Vomit out. You are so rude. I'll have your job. You shouldn't be making out on the job. Blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. Most Karens don't say the last part, though. Now, my man hates being poked in the chest. One, he finds it disrespectful, two, it hurts, and three, it's a sensitive area due to multiple surgeries he's had to crack open his sternum. He's had an artificial heart valve and a pacemaker since he was 10 due to his heart valve blowing at four, but they sewed it back up till it blew again from lousy wound care. He slapped her hand away and stated what most Karens rarely listen to, I don't work here. This is where I come back in. I'm standing at the end of the aisle, her back to me, seeing if he needs my backup when this d-bag canoe screams bullcrap nobody wears those colors by choice you obviously work here so stop lying as she's saying this she continues to poke him in the chest he's getting angrier and angrier barely containing the urge to flatten this f sniffer as she started poking him in the sternum again i already started walking forward i grabbed her wrist at the last word and dug my nails in just for a second I left some indents, but nothing permanent. She screamed, assault, you just assaulted me. I smirked because one, she finally had probably alerted one of the actual staff, and two, I had her on the ropes. She just didn't know it yet. I looked her square in the face and said, and what exactly would you call what you were just doing? She snorted. Yes, snorted. I was teaching this unruly employee some manners. I bared my teeth. Are you blind, deaf, and stupid? I realized the first one when you mistook my man's attire for an orange apron. You know, the actual uniform of the store. I figured the second one because no one is actually stupid enough to think someone would lie about their place of employment while at work. But apparently I was wrong because you honestly think the managers and the cops I'm sure they're calling right now are going to look at the footage of you 
Repeatedly poking my boyfriend in the chest isn't assault? She spluttered for a sec, then spouted something along the lines of, You shouldn't talk to your elders like that. To which I replied, You don't look a day over 25, B. I am your elder. I'm 32. My man's 40, so he counts too. Now, get the F out of our faces before I lose my cool and use one of these tile samples and knock your teeth out. She recoiled. You'd go to jail. And I smiled as evilly as I could. You mean I'd get free room and board and peace and quiet from my kids? And I'd have taught an entitled bee a lesson? Win-win, you C-word. She backpedaled so fast, I swear you could see her kicking up dust. Shortly after she left, one of the employees came around the corner and looked at us checking out tiles and kept walking. They really need to hire more people if it took that long to come check out the ruckus. We bought our tiles and headed out to the parking lot. That's it. That's my encounter with the IWDHL story. If you don't believe me, it's fine, but I assure you it really did happen. She screamed a bit more and tried to talk over me, and I'm sure I was a little less eloquent when talking to her, but otherwise. No, we won't help with your internet teeth. I'm a third generation majority owner of a dental laboratory. We make the dentures, partials, crowns, and other things that dentists put in your mouth. I'm a grown man, 40, with a full beard. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's this virus going around currently, and our industry is all but shut down. This last week, I had to lay off the majority of my staff, and it was painful. So Thursday afternoon, I grabbed some beers for the remaining staff, and we drank a few while we did stuff. Due to our near shutdown, I'm in jeans and a college tee. Our business is not public-facing. We don't even have a real sign, just an awning with the business initials. It's not in a shopping center, just a building somewhere off the main road. This is the scenario Thursday when Karen walks in. She immediately dumps her bag on the receiving bench as I'm getting up from my bench and walk over. Hey, I need y'all to help me. Now, occasionally a patient is sent to us for a repair from a local clinic to get something done faster. Sometimes we even have to accept a prosthetic straight from someone's mouth. This is what I'm expecting. Karen pulls a box with that uniquely Chinese blue-gray gradient packaging and lettering from her purse, so I know something's weird immediately. I ordered these teeth online, and it says you just need to put them in warm water, but I can't figure it out. Yes, Karen has fallen for some ad on Facebook or somewhere for a new smile at home for $25. The package inside the box she pulled out even has a fake logo on it from a reputable manufacturer. I will refer to said brand as Quick Teeth to avoid sullying their name. You might even know it. I still haven't said a word. She's still talking. It's Quick Teeth. Do you know Quick Teeth? At this point, she opens the box and the most garishly bad, bright white monstrosity emerges. It's the same material as those fake vampire teeth we had as kids. It's bad. Yes, ma'am. I know Quick Teeth. We actually sell Quick Teeth. Uh, those aren't Quick Teeth. Oh, they're not? Well, I got a really good deal with them. I found it online. Only $25, but I can't get them to work. You have to help me. No, I don't. You bypassed the whole of dentistry to buy those, and now you're in a dental lab. I'm not a medical professor. I can't see patients anyway without a prescription from a clinician, and you don't have one. Go see a dentist. She then jumped into a rambling story about moving soon. Well, I just need someone quickly. I know the owner. Is he here? Now it comes flooding back to me. She knows where we are because she applied to be a driver here over two years ago. She was not employable then, so I forgot her. Lady, I am the owner. Record scratch. Oh, well, you look good. Have you lost weight? I didn't recognize you. No, I'm wearing jeans. Oh, well, insert rambling story about needing her teeth fixed and how many dentists she's seen in her life. I just stand there silently staring. Okay, well... I won't bother you anymore. She then put her hand out to shake. We're not doing that. The virus. Exit stage left. I wiped down everything she touched with Clorox wipes. Just wow. He actually sent a letter. Background. I used to work at an automotive parts store, and I guess people started to recognize me as I worked there for a long time, and I was very good at my job. Often people would come in asking for me by name as friends would recommend my advice and service. I often repaired small problems in the parking lot if we were slow. Fast forward two years later. I hadn't been an employee of the store for a long time. I've been in a few times before and none of the staff are the same by now, so I don't get recognized by anyone, not even the managers. But this old man, he knows me. I don't know that he knows me, but he knows me. 
So I'm looking for the correct oil filter for my brother's motorcycle, and all the while, this guy's just standing next to me, staring at me, waiting for something, and I have no idea what he wants. I'm dressed nothing like a member of the staff. After about five minutes, I'd had enough and asked him what he wanted. He says, I'm waiting for you to help me. I asked him why, and he said, you work here, don't you? I said, no, I didn't. I haven't for over two years. He said, you're lying. You just don't want to help me because you're lazy. I said I'd be more than happy to help him if he'd just asked, but it was rude to stand next to me expecting assistance from a stranger. He then huffed and walked away. I saw him speak briefly with the new store manager, and he pointed at me and stormed out. The regional manager, who I still know quite well, actually sent me a text a few days ago asking me why someone sent a written complaint about my poor service to headquarters when I hadn't worked there in over two years. I laughed, imagining the grumpy old fart curled over his table, muttering profanities, furiously scribbling. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.